So I've been using these AirPods Pro second gen for over seven months now. First couple of months were great, but now I can definitely see some problems with them that you should know about. Watch closely because in this video, I'm gonna show you everything interesting and strange about the new AirPods Pro. Let's kick things off with design and ergonomics. From a solely visual perspective, these AirPods look great. The case is very small and lightweight and fits perfectly into this smaller pocket of jeans. It has speaker grills and a strap loop. I will talk more on that later in the video. As for the earbuds themselves, sleek, glossy, white plastic earbuds the size of an acorn definitely still look modern over three years after the design was launched. I think this design is worth at least nine points. Oh, and are we keeping scores? I guess we are. Moving on to the ergonomics and fitment. Listen, my ears are pretty standard in every way. If you Google ear, there is a chance you accidentally stumble across mine in a myriad of identical ears. So it's no miracle that these earbuds fit me perfectly. Always? In over half a year, they haven't fallen out once. Always in place, no matter what I did. Running, lifting weights in the gym, or just wandering around the city. So for ear fitness, I'll give them a solid A. Another thing that needs to be addressed are the new volume controls. On the original AirPods Pro, there were only three ways to change the volume. With your phone's controls, with Apple Watch, or if you're not afraid of getting strange looks by asking Siri to help. With AirPods Pro 2, you can also move your finger over the stem up and down. And believe me, this makes a real difference. You just do everything from your AirPods, squeeze once to pause, twice to skip forward, three times to go back, squeeze and hold for noise cancellation and transparency modes, and rub up and down for volume. That noise cancellation and transparency deserve their own section, so stay tuned. So I would confidently say that volume controls feel very intuitive and easy to use, and despite my fears, the size of the sensitive area is enough for all controls. 10 points go to the new volume control feature, hooray. At this point in the video, I can't ignore the elephant in the room, the sound quality. When I bought these AirPods Pro, I was expecting to get the Pro level of sound quality. I've listened to probably a couple thousand tracks with these AirPods in, tested dozens of styles and genres, and now I finally have a definite conclusion. The sound is actually quite nice. It's not nice enough to be Pro in any way, but it's much nicer than in previous AirPods models. It has more bass, more highs and lows, and the sound stage is wide enough so you could be immersed into the sound. But it wasn't like this out of the box. So here are three things you must do as soon as you unpack these AirPods. One, open settings, click on your AirPods and do an ear fit test. This automatic test will help you select the appropriate size of ear tips of which we have four in the box. It will test for the noise leaks and seal quality. I personally need to use the standard M sized ear tips both for comfort and sound reasons. Also, I think this test adjusts the EQ slightly to better suit the specifics of your ears, but that's some serious tinfoil had assumption right here. Two, go to the control center, hold on the volume bar, and turn on fixed spatial audio. This will make the sound 10 times better. With this on, you become surrounded by sound and hear every detail more clearly, just as the creators envisioned it. I will talk about spatial audio a little bit later, so don't skip this stage. Three, go back to your AirPods settings and click personalized spatial audio. This feature literally scans your ears using the iPhone's 3D sensor that's part of its Face ID system, so that it can and customize its audio for the shape of your ears. The phone will ask you to aim it to your ear and move your head around, and that's all you have to do. And please note that the effect of this action is different for everyone. Some people can hear a difference, while some get a massive quality boost. I personally hear only a slight difference, but that may be due to my music taste rather than the feature itself. Now, when we are really talking about spatial audio, I need to tell you about its two modes, fixed or head tracked. With fixed mode, the sound moves with you and you always hear the same sound. With head tracked, however, AirPods track your head relative to the phone and as you move your head from side to side, the sound changes like it does in real life, kinda. This head tracking mode is a little too much for me to use constantly, but it definitely is worth it when watching movies. That's when it really shines. But for the other 99% of time, I recommend using the standard fixed mode. As we arrive to really talk about signature features of AirPods Pro 2, I need to make one thing clear. I'm all about concentration. So active noise canceling was the main feature I was looking forward to, and I had huge expectations of it. What did I get? Well, almost what I asked for. The amount of 
noise it filters is insane. These AirBots are perfect for trains, planes, public transport, and especially for people who have neighbors next door who can't finish their renovations for the last five years. So yeah, these are pretty much perfect in terms of noise canceling. When you are wearing them and listening to some chill music, you basically forget about the outside world, which is perfect for me. However, I have one small issue. If you turn on noise canceling without music, you may quickly get annoyed by the space-like quietness with only occasional sound caused by the noise canceling itself. But if you can look past that, you'll have zero issues. And let's talk about the transparency mode. I think the transparency mode is what really separates these earphones from everyone else on the market. In this mode, you get a full amount of background noise, you instantly forget you're wearing AirPods at all, you just hear everything normally and some high quality music on top of that. It's perfect for conversations or anything that requires your attention, but it gets even better. There's a thing called adaptive transparency. If you enable this in AirPods settings, you'll get the weird mix of transparency and noise canceling. You will hear everything the same way, but all loud noises like police sirens or ambulances will be lowered in volume. This way you won't get those sudden spikes in loudness around you, which not only helps protect your ears, but also makes cities more enjoyable to live in. So yeah, all noise related and sound related features get a solid nine from me, great stuff. Now let's quickly talk about battery life. For me, the battery life has always been more than needed. Apple claims that the earbuds can last up to six hours of listening and I totally believe them. There were a few occasions when I was dangerously close to discharging them completely, but most of the time my listening sessions doesn't last more than three hours. They charge really fast in the case and only a couple minutes in the case can give you around half an hour of listening time, but that's not everything. If you've just bought these AirPods, make sure to turn on the optimized battery charging in settings. This is super important for preserving good battery health of the case and AirPods themselves. Also, I would like to single out the MagSafe in the case and the ability to charge them with the Apple Watch charger. I don't have the MagSafe pad, but I do have an Apple Watch and using that charger to charge AirPods overnight has been my main way of doing it. There are a couple of reasons for it. One, it's slower, which means less strain in the battery. Two, it's more convenient than finding that lightning cables and plugging them in. So if you also have Apple Watch, try this feature out. It's great. Summing up the battery and charging, nine points. How about issues? Well, I can say that it was always a smooth ride but for most of the time, I've had no issues. A couple of times I got connection issues when one AirPod just won't connect to another or just the connection drops halfway into the song, but again, it's mostly great. I've had no issues with range. If your phone is not behind two walls and rooms from AirPods, you will be fine. So. Should you buy them? On the one hand, I really want to encourage you to buy them right now. But on the second thought, you may want to wait a little. Hear me out. If you're not planning to buy the new iPhone 15 or 15 Pro this year, you can buy these AirPods right here and now. But if you're waiting for the iPhone 15, which will finally have Type-C port, it's better to wait for the AirPods to receive a minor case update with the Type-C port. Because having one cable to charge everything will be far more convenient. Mark my word, in a couple months, Apple will quietly add Type-C to AirPods and you will be stuck with earbuds with old port. You don't want that. Anyway, those were seven fantastic months of using these AirPods Pro second gen, and I'm very much looking forward to using them even more. And the overall score is 36, and that's a great score. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you in the next one.